What is a walking bass line? Simply put, a jazz bassist establishes groove by playing quarter notes each bar of the tune. They also establish harmony by playing roots or other chord tones at the same time. Quarter notes, it sounds pretty easy, right? Well, it's a lot more complicated than you think. An average bass line can keep the time while outlining the chords and the form of the song. A great bass line can provide lift, direction, and be functional and melodic at the same time while responding to whatever the soloist is playing. How do we make a line like that? First, some history. Early jazz bass players in New Orleans were usually doublers. They came over from playing other bass range instruments like baritone saxophone, trombone, and sousaphone because the early roots of jazz came from marching band music. When jazz started to become more of a chamber music, the double bass became the preferred instrument when it moved inside. It was softer and more suited to an inner acoustic environment. Although bass players at the time still played from that two-beat kind of tradition that most sousaphone players played during the music. No one really knows who the first bass player to play four quarter notes to a bar was, but we can all probably agree that it was Wellman Bro. Bro played bass in Duke Ellington's bands in the 20s and 30s, among others. Now last lesson, we talked about beats two and four being those groove beats, the hump. Today I want to talk about beats one and three, which I refer to as those harmonic beats and why they're so important. 90% of chord changes land on beats one and three in jazz. That means we have to play chord tones on beats one and three. Now there will be exceptions. There are always exceptions when we talk about jazz, but as a general rule to begin with, think of this as being one of the most important rules you're gonna follow when walking jazz bass. Play chord tones on beats one and three. Playing an outside note on a very critical beat can really kill the swing of your line. That's right, the notes matter when you're walking. Chord tones from bottom to top, bottom because we're the basis, chord tones we're gonna deal with are one, three, five, seven, and sometimes six works really well in a line. Let's use F7 as an example. Those notes from bottom to top would be F, A, C, E flat, and the sixth would be D. You need to know your chord tones for every chord and in every single key. This is the main problem that I tend to see with younger bass players. They can't name or play the chord tones for every chord that they're gonna play in a song. If you wanna walk good lines, be sure that you can play one, three, five, seven for every chord. Secondly, a functional walking bass line uses something called smooth voice leading. Smooth voice leading, what is that? Smooth voice leading was established by Bach. All it means is that we're using mostly smaller intervals to move in our lines. We're trying to use mostly half steps and whole steps maybe an occasional minor third or major third, but you wanna make small movements what the line is primarily made up of and save the larger jumps, anything a third or higher, for an occasional drop. The smoother that you can make your line, the more coherent it's gonna sound. Box music is full of examples of how he would move from one chord to the next and not really have to jump from root to root. 
They were very smooth with their voice leading. And this is something that we should aspire to as basis to create smooth lines. I always learned that walking a good bass line uh, meant that if it was written down on paper, you could draw a line connecting the notes and it would make a smooth wave and a smooth hill that went down and up with an occasional jump. Make your lines sound as smooth and connected as possible and you'll give the soloist a really great bed to play over. Still with me? I have a lot of material to go over, so I decided to split this video into two. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate 10 techniques that'll show you how to successfully create your own walking bass lines. I'm also going to present a couple of exercises for beginners or intermediate players and a couple that I use with my advanced and college level players in order to sharpen their walking bass line skills. So you've heard a bit of the history of walking lines. I've told you some really great ingredients that go into walking lines. And next week, I'll be back with a video that shows you exactly how to construct those lines and to build on them with some great exercises. Don't miss the next episode coming this week. If you're interested at all, please hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you can be notified immediately as soon as I update with part two. I appreciate you watching and tuning in, and I appreciate your comments and suggestions below, of which I will answer all. Until the next video, which is coming very soon, Take care of yourself and love your neighbor.